Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on looking at how we can monitor our EC2 instances. So monitoring is you know a very important part of your IT responsibilities especially in terms of reliability and availability and also performance. So you should collect monitoring data from all parts uh, in your AWS solution so that you can be more easily you know be aware of what's going on uh, be in a better position to debug if there is a failure and so on. But before you start monitoring the EC2 instances, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind and especially ask yourself in terms of a plan because it's always good and recommended to have a monitoring plan uh, when you are implementing monitoring in EC2 instances. So here are a few questions to ask yourself before you actually start monitoring and implement a monitoring plan. So what are your goals for monitoring? And what are you trying to accomplish uh, in terms of monitoring EC2 instances? Um, are you trying to see if there's a high CPU utilization? Are you trying to just see the overall health of your uh, EC2 instances? So what, what's your eventual goal um, in terms of monitoring and why do you actually want to monitor? Um, is there even a need to monitor your EC2 instances? So after you you know define your goals, uh, next thing is you know what resources are you going to monitor? Now there are various resources that you can monitor, and even within EC2 instances, there are various variables of EC2 instances that we can monitor. So after you define your goals, you know that's going to help you define what resources are you actually going to monitor. And after, and after those resources, then you can decide how often do you want to monitor it. Because again, we can monitor it on a regular basis, on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and also minute by minute basis, right? So if we can, if we implement that detailed monitoring in EC2 instances, then we can monitor our instances. It'll give us stats every single minute in terms of our utilization of EC2 instances, right? So after we have all of those defined, that's when we can actually pick and choose what monitoring tools that we want to use and that we could possibly use to monitor our EC2 instances. Can we just monitor through the EC2 dashboard or do we need to do cloud uh, CloudWatch? Do we need to do CloudWatch alarms? Do we need to do CloudTrail? So that can be defined after we figure out and define what resources we want to monitor and how granular of, uh, of data do we actually want to monitor. And then who's going to perform those monitoring tasks? You know, is it going to be the IT manager? Is it going to be the, the, the users? Do you want to actively monitor? That means, you know, do you want somebody to be logged into your EC2 console to monitor? Or do you want to be notified by exception? You know, if there's a high CPU utilization or if an instance failure, do you want to be notified? So you want to make sure you define those tasks in terms of the responsibilities. And then again, the, that goes hand in hand with the last one, the notifications, right? So if instance failure happens, who should be notified? You know, do you want the head of IT to be notified? Do you want the person that actually that's actually going to be recovering from the failure to be notified? So again, that depends on your organization's policies and procedures in terms of that. But these questions are very important to answer before you actually start implementing any type of monitoring in EC2 instances and even in general, uh, any type of monitoring for your IT resources that you want to implement, you want to make sure that you have these basic questions answered or at least in mind before you start implementing an EC2 monitoring plan. So where, where should we start, right? So to establish a baseline, now at minimum, we shouldn't be monitoring these items, right? So uh, the CPU utilization, the network utilization, the disk performance, the disk read and writes, and then the memory utilization. Now these are very, very basic things that we need to monitor uh, in any monitoring plan for EC2 instances, because this actually tells us the health of our EC2 instances, and it lets us know, you know, do we need to upgrade or do we have too much hardware dedicated to this server? Can we downgrade our hardware? So these metrics are minimum what you should be monitoring for our EC2 instances. Now, how often? Again, that depends on your goals and your overall monitoring plan. But in terms of the metrics, these are the minimum that you should at least be monitoring in your monitoring plan for EC2 instances. Now, AWS provides, again, various different tools to monitor your EC2 instances. So we have two, two ways to monitor. We have automated and manual. So in the automated, again, you can use multiple tools that you guys see in the list to do automated monitoring for EC2 instances and report back when there's something wrong. 
So there's the system and instance status checks. So again, the system, uh, AWS basically monitors the any hardware failure, uh, loss of network connectivity, system power, software issues on the physical host. So system status checks are usually something that AWS needs to take care of physically at their data centers. It's not something that would be under our control. What we, what we would be able to do is, you know, we could restart the instance or we could stop the instance and start it up again because usually when you do that it usually starts up in a new physical host again i say usually because we don't know if it's 100 percent of the time but aws does say that usually they dedicate a new host when you stop and start the instance so that's something that is under our control um, that we could do with a uh, system checks or we could do an instance status checks and that's monitoring the software and network configuration of your individual instance so these checks are, are basically going to detect problems that require involvement or repair. Like, so if there's a, uh, you know, failed system check or if the memory is exhausted or if there's an incompatible uh, kernel and so on. So these two are automated along with the CloudWatch alarms, events, and logs. So again, we can watch single metric over a time period that we can specify, uh, perform one or more actions, you know, based on the value of the metric. So let's say if we want to be notified if the CPU is above 70% for, uh, you know, over five minutes or, or over two minutes, we can set alarms, we can set events, and then we can obviously do the logs uh, in which, you know, we can monitor, store, and access our files. Um, through CloudWatch and CloudTrail and even other resources where they can be saved on S3 buckets so we can do some audits, we can do some analysis after the month to see if the resources we've dedicated to AWS are actually you know, optimal for our organization. There's also EC2 monitoring scripts, so basically Perl scripts that we can monitor memory, disk, and swap file usage for our instances. And then there's finally, there's a management pack for the Microsoft System Center Operation Manager. So again, this is specific to um, Microsoft, but basically links EC2 instances and the Windows operating systems running inside them. So the management pack is basically an extension of the Microsoft Systems Operation Manager, and it uses a designated computer in, in, in the data center called a watcher node and the AWS API is to remotely discover and collect information about the AWS resources. So again, these are some automated monitoring tools that we can use and implement to do automated monitoring of our AC2 instances. Then we have, again, manual monitoring. So another important part of monitoring EC2 instances is manual monitoring. So it's not like something, it's not like you only want to do uh, automated monitoring in a comprehensive monitoring plan, you also want to have manual monitoring, right? So these are, you know, some of the tools we can use to monitor manually. Again, manually would obviously mean you sitting in front of a computer or opening it up on your mobile phone or your tablet and actually looking at the health of the EC2 instances, you know, whether it's through the EC2 dashboard, whether it's through the CloudWatch dashboard, um, you know, whether you're using a to graph EC2 monitoring data, to troubleshoot issues and discover trends, uh, doing the resource metrics, looking at the alarms to see if you're actually being notified of everything, and just overall, you know, getting a glance, a 360 holistic view of everything that's going on within your AWS environment, just so you know everything, uh, you know, firsthand, rather than relying only on alarms uh, or only on the automated monitoring, it's always good, you know, uh, once a day or once a week, uh, go on to the EC2 dashboard or your AWS console in general and just look at everything that's configured, everything is working properly, everything is healthy, and so on. So these are some of the things that you want to keep in mind and make sure we implement in terms of monitoring our EC2 instances. And again, first and foremost, make sure that we answer the questions, that we define our goals, what we want to monitor, and how we actually want to monitor them.